Hey YouTube! So today I'm going to talk about the importance of getting a polished vertical slice of your game developed early when you're developing a new game. What you're looking at is the game I've been developing called TurboFat as it looked on March 13th, 2020 after about a month of development. This game is being developed in Godit. It's open source and you can find a link to the source in the description below. So first of all, what is a polished vertical slice? And Isn't that sort of a contradiction? Isn't polishing something spending time and, and making it perfect, and then a vertical slice is rushing through it and getting it done as fast as possible. And the answer is, yeah, it's not really a contradiction. You can do both things because you're not doing your entire game. You're just doing a small piece of it. So you can polish it and make it look like you want the final game to look. And you can also have a vertical slice where it's not the entire game. It's just a small piece of it, so you can develop it quickly. So why do we want to get a polished vertical slice of our game done early instead of, say, fleshing it out or making the game longer or adding more mechanics? And the reason is we want to establish a theme because a theme in often cases will draw, uh, drive your mechanics. You know, you might have a different platformer if your main character is a janitor versus if your main character is a marine or something like that. It also helps you avoid rework where you might end up having to redraw a lot of your assets if you go with a different look and feel and it helps establish feasibility where you can figure out early on oh is this game going to be too hard is it going to be too much to draw do we not have the right artist to, to finish this game so as an example of why you want that vertical polish slice done early here's a failed prototype from a few years ago which was going to combine the piece physics of puzzle bobble or bust a move with the catch and throw mechanics of Magical Drop or Money Idol Exchanger. So this game was fun to play and fun to make and I, it has a lot of little scenarios. You know, you have to get rid of, you have to match four pieces to get rid of them. And then on this level, um, everything just keeps coming at you even if you're continuing a combo. And other levels have other wrinkles like maybe there are bombs or only three colors but the pieces move super fast. Or there are seven colors but an extra rule where like, hey, there's a way to get rid of the seventh color really easily. So it was a fun, fun game to play and I loved playing it. But then when it came time to where I wanted to share it, I realized, well, there's, there's some work I have to do. Okay, this, this character at the bottom, who's right now pretty much just a static, static character, I, I need to animate him a little. I don't like the look of the game as far as it's sort of this uncanny valley between being a retro game and being a more modern, uh, smooth looking game. I, wanna, I want it to be one or the other, you know? Uh, but then when it came time to actually redraw the art or animate that character, it was half like, I've never animated before, I don't, I don't know how to do that, and half just, that's a lot of work, come on, I don't want to do that right now. So I wish I'd gotten that vertical polish slice out early where I could have uh, mitigated those risks and figured out, okay, I can't animate, let's make, let's make this game look way different. You know, screw the main character, we'll just have little boxes and circles and it'll be very abstract. Or, you know, hey, I, um, I don't like the look of the game. Let's just uh, let, let's scrap the little 16-bit look and go for something simpler. You want to nail that before you have six months worth of art and assets and gameplay logic holding you back and keeping you from progressing. So after I figured out that my game was fun to play, I also wanted to nail the final look and feel and the theme of the game. So I looked at the pieces that I was using for the game, and I wondered, well, could I spell anything with these? I got a, I got a T, I got an O a J and an L, and then the pentominoes give me a U, a bigger different L, and then a P and a Q. So I could spell maybe Jolt Plug, that's not really interesting, but then when I flipped them around, well okay, what about what about Turbo Fat if I sort of bend my brain? Yeah, okay, that sort of spells Turbo Fat. What would, what would Turbo Fat be about? Well, maybe a game where you run a restaurant and you try to make characters fat really fast. So that's a little bit horrifying. How do I sell that concept? And I thought, well, maybe if it's cute enough. Maybe you got games like Pikmin, which are about swarming enemies with masses of creatures, where, you know, if, if those were ants or, or human beings, that'd be sort of horrifying, but it's cute. And then you got Root, which is a board game about acute counterinsurgency. So maybe I could make a, a cute game about feeding characters and making them really fat in a restaurant. So next I drew a mock-up of the game in Paint Tool SAI. And I thought, well, maybe you'll have a little chef character over here that you can see. And then you'll have a customer over here and you can see him as you feed him. And then in the middle, your blocks are all going to be food items now. And as you, as you build them up or as you make boxes, maybe those will become bigger, more delicious looking food items. So I set out about drawing some delicious looking food blocks for my game. And I decided some of them will look like fruit. And some might look like delicious chocolate or marshmallow. Or this one here looks like bread. And if you do a really good job, maybe the bread gets frosted and then it looks sort of like a cake. And I started with something more 8-bit pixely looking, but I ended up going with a higher res look, sort of like Mr. Driller here. 
And then I thought, well, what if the player isn't playing the game correctly and they're not really making boxes and they're just ignoring it? And then how about vegetables? So the leftover pieces that you're not using correctly, those will turn into vegetables and sort of be a cue. Well, vegetables aren't high in fat. I'm not making delicious cakes. I'm making vegetables. That's bad. And so I added a whole bunch of different vegetable looking blocks. I have some tomatoes here and croutons. So if you do a bad job, you make a healthy salad. So after I drew all the pretty high res textures for my game, I noticed something was wrong with the way it looked. These tile maps didn't look smooth. There were these little lines separating the tiles in my game. Why was that happening? The reason that was happening was when these tile maps, you can see are just, they're just drawn as a big PNG. When these get scaled up, they are touching the other tiles. And when they get scaled up, they sort of bleed into each other. So to fix this, I used a tool called ASEprite, which lets you export sprite sheets with a gap between them and which extrudes the outermost layer of pixels. And after I redrew my sprites with the gaps and with the extrusions, everything looked good. So after making that change, those little artifacts are gone and you can't see the separation between the tiles. So that's good. And you can see the game looks all right. You got the ability to move these pieces and they look they look smooth, they look slick. And then when you form them into three by threes or bigger, you make these boxes. And I also added a background, like a wooden texture over here. And you got the, the chalkboard on the left, which keeps your score. That's not done. That'll eventually have nice chalky written textures. And the surface you're playing on is sort of a darkened hibachi grill. I, I wanted to, to downplay that. I don't want it to be in your face. So it's like the whole game is, is gray as you're playing it. But so it's got a little bit more life to it. There's still more to do, but the, the risk is gradually getting mitigated to where I like how the game looks. And I do think the finished product will be something that's appealing and people will want to play. So the last remaining major risk is as far as the animation ideas I had, where if you're going to be a chef, and you're going to have some customer, you're going to have to animate this chef cooking things and throwing stuff at the customer. And is that going to look good or is that going to be too much to take on? So I'm going to cover that risk in the next video. I hope you'll join me.